As a living creature on earth, not only us humans, but all animals have to learn how to survive in this planet. Some of these wonderful creatures have amazing ways to outlive these dangers and enemies around them. This world is a place of tough competition and only the strongest species will survive these challenges. Hi boys and girls, you're watching ITTV. Thank you for watching ITTV. Well, today we begin with a new chapter, which is protection. What is protection, children? Protection is something that keeps you safe. So today's lesson, we are going to see how animals protect themselves from danger and other enemies. Today's lesson is special characteristics in animals who protect themselves from danger and enemies. <music> And how do animals protect themselves from danger and enemies? Why do they need this protection? Well, children, the enemies of the animals are actually who? We humans are also a kind of enemy for the animals. Why do these animals actually have to protect themselves? They compete for food. Only the strongest species will survive while the weaker species will die out in this species survival. This is simple species survival. So how do animals actually protect themselves? Let's have a look at the graphic. Firstly, by using hard scales, thick hair, hard shells or spines. Next, by using sharp claws. Next, by having bad smell. Some animals have the ability to change color to match their surroundings. Some of them have got strong and sharp horns. Lastly, most animals also have long legs and strong muscles. Do you know what's an armor, children? The armor was actually used in the age of the knights for warriors who went to war. Long ago, there were humans who actually wore these heavy steels, heavy pieces of steels actually, on their body to protect their body from getting hurt. So, what about animals? Do they also have armors? Yes, they do. But the armors of animals are not made of steel, I can assure you of that. But they are made of hard scales, thick fur, spines all over the body and hard shells. So, what are the kind of animals who use this kind of armor. Firstly, let's have a look at few animals which are covered by hard scales. Do you know the crocodile children? Well, let me let you into two simple secret of the crocodile. They have got hard scales. Yes, I agree with you. But do you know that the Nile and Australian crocodiles are actually the most vicious, the word vicious here means dangerous animal, in the world that is because these crocodiles have the ability to take down a water buffalo by themselves so what is the next animal which is covered by scales have you heard of pangolin before well they have got shiny armor on their body they have got horny and overlapping scales do you know that the pangolins actually have got bad eyesight so how do they go around wandering at night finding for food? By their sense of smell, of course. So what are the kind of animals which are covered by a hard shell? The garden snail and the tortoise, of course. There's something very special about the garden snail. Do you know that the garden snails have got tentacles? My question to you children, how many pair of tentacles do the garden snails have? One two, three or more? Well, the correct answer is two. They have got one long tentacle and one short pair of tentacle. So which pair of tentacle is used for their eyesight? The longer one, of course. The shorter one is used for sense of smell and sense of feeling. So the next animal which is covered by hard shell are the tortoise. It is important that these tortoise carry their heavy hard shell wherever they go to protect themselves from danger and enemies. We know different kind of animals which has got thick fur but today we are going to be talking about the bear. 
why is the bear covered by thick fur or thick skin? So we shall see later in the lesson why they need this thick hair to cover their whole body. Next, we shall have a look at a few types of animals which have spines on their body. Let's have a look at the porcupine fish. Well, from this picture, you can see that the porcupine fish here is blown up. Why is that so? In the beginning, they're actually quite small. But when this fish sense danger in the water, they actually swallow air or water and blow up to this size. The spines on their body actually protect them from being eaten by bigger fish. So, the next animal which uses the spines are the porcupines. Have you seen a porcupine before, children? This is an example of a porcupine. How many thousands of spiny quills, you know, the sharp ones coming out of their body, they are called so, do the porcupine have? Mostly they have about 30 to 40,000 spiny quills on their body. Next, why do you think, let's remember, why do you think the bears do need the thick hair on their body? This is the answer to my question earlier. The bear eats the honey out of the beehive. While doing this, the bear will be stung by the bees. So, they need thick fur to protect them from the bee stings. So, now you know how these animals who have got hard shells and different kind of thick fur and spines on their body actually protect themselves from danger and enemies. So, what about animals who can produce bad smell? So, why do they actually produce this kind of bad smell, children? That is, to prevent them from being eaten by other animals. What kind of animals actually produce bad smell? As you can see here, we have got a picture of bed bugs. Did you know that the bed bugs, which can be found in your pillows or bed sheets, actually can produce bad smell? This is how they prevent themselves by being eaten by their predators. So, what about the porcupines? As you know, the porcupines not only have got spiny quills on their bodies, they also can produce bad smell to prevent themselves from being eaten by other animals. Just imagine biting into something sharp. Ouch, that would hurt. The other animal which also produce bad smell are the skunk. Well, children, the skunk are actually always symbolized as smelling bad. Why is that so? Are they always bad smelling? Are they made that way by God? Or what are the special features do they have in their body to smell bad? The skunk actually has a special gland in their body which produces this stinky smell. Why do they have to produce the smell? That is because this scares their enemies away. There's a feature of the skunk which is so special about it. What actually happens to the skunk when it detects danger. The skunk would actually erect their tail. This is how they show or symbolize themselves detecting danger. Other than the skunk, the normal house cockroaches found in your homes also give out bad smell. Do you know what these cockroaches actually feed on? They can feed on fungi, remaining plants and animals, book binders, so keep your books safe children, and woods. We have learned about animals who actually use bad smell to scare their enemies away. So, do you know what is a camouflage, children? Camouflage, how do you spell them? C-A-M-O-U-F-L-A-G-E Now, this camouflage is actually the ability of certain special animals to change their body color according to the surrounding. So, if an animal actually lands on the leaves, they would turn their body into green. If they land on tree bark, they would change their body color according to the color of the tree bark, which is brown, of course. So, what are the kind of animals who have got this special feature? Let's have a look. The chameleon, of course, they have the ability to change their body color according to the surrounding. So what makes the chameleon special other than the ability to change the color? The chameleon have got a long fang. The fang is actually as long as its body. It uses the tongue to catch its prey in less than one second. 
so fast? Well, the chameleon's body color actually changes according to their emotion and the temperature around. Remember children, that when humans actually get angry, their face all flushes and go red. So same goes to the chameleon. If it senses danger, it immediately changes its body color according to the surrounding. Other than the chameleon, we have got an animal called the arctic fox. From the word the arctic fox, we can know that the fox actually lives in cold area because arctic is a region of cold area in the world. Let's have a look of how this arctic fox actually look like. This is an example of an arctic fox. Now what makes the fox special like the chameleon? The ability to change color of course. But we do have summer and we do have winter in the seasons. When it is summer, the arctic fox usually is about grey or brown. But when winter approaches, the arctic fox have to change its body colour looking like the snow around them. So they would either be white or slightly bluish. So enough about the arctic fox and the chameleon which has got the ability to change its body colour. So what about other features are the special characteristics in animals who protect themselves from danger and enemy? In our very first lessons, we have learned about the basic need of animals. Animals have got basic need like water, food, shelter and air. Well, what about food? Animals come in three different categories, which is omnivore, carnivore and the herbivore. The carnivores are usually predators, that means they are animals which attack other animals. What about herbivores? They are actually plant-eating animals. So how do these herbivores actually protect themselves from being eaten by carnivores? Simple, most herbivores have got sharp and strong horns on their head. So. What are the kind of herbivores which have got these sharp, strong horns? Let's have a look. The goat. The goat is actually an animal with horns. Well, did you know that there are different kinds of species of goat and all the different species of goats actually have got different sizes and shapes of horn? Other than the goat, the cows also are animals with horns. Next are the bulls. As you can see from the picture, the bulls actually have a pair of strong, long, white horns. Now, other than these strong horns, the bulls also have got strong muscles in their body. This is how they protect themselves from danger and enemy. Now, we have spoken about the goat, the cow, the bull. What is the next animal which uses horn to protect themselves? The deers, of course. But there's one thing different about the deers. The deers have got antlers. Antlers are also a kind of horn. The deers most special characteristic are the antlers. What do you think children? Female or male deers? Which one of them have got antlers? Well in some species only the males have got antlers. This shows that the species have got enough pride and proudness about having the antlers. So, but some species, the male and the female both have got antlers. So we are done with talking about animals which have got strong horns to protect themselves. So, other than horns, children, what other features do herbivores like horses and zebras have to protect themselves from danger and enemies? If you see a picture of a horse clearly, you would notice that their body is actually quite big and strong. Their legs are very tiny and thin and long. But do you know that the muscles of the leg of the horses and zebras are actually very strong indeed. They have got long, strong muscles. So, these horses actually need this long and strong leg muscles to run as far as they could to prevent themselves from being eaten by predators, as you can see in the picture. So, what is the reason they have got hooves? Hooves actually protect their feet from getting hurt while they are running. 
either than the horses, the zebras. What are zebras actually, children? Zebras are actually striped horses. Their body is covered by two different colors of stripes, which is black and white. So children, we are done with animals who have got long and strong leg muscles. What about animals which use claw to attack other animals to protect themselves? What are they? They are the carnivores, of course. What kind of carnivores do you know? The tigers, the cats, and so on. So what do they use these claws for? To capture their prey, tear them apart, and eat these prey. So let's have a look at animals who use claw to actually attack their prey. Firstly, the cat. Do you have a pet cat at home? Well, have a look at their paw. They would actually have sharp claws which can easily scratch you but remember that most of these animals with claws actually have got soft pads their feet is actually quite soft this is because they need these soft pads to crawl slowly to eat their prey other than the cat we have got the tiger the tiger is actually a very dangerous animal you can see in the picture a tiger and an example of their claw. Other than the tiger, the eagle also uses his claw. How do they do that? This is a picture of the eagle and his claw. Why do they use claw for? To find food, of course. The eagle uses its claw to grab any small animals that it spots on the ground while it is flying. So children, we have realized that animals actually amaze us in different ways by having special characteristics. So are you ready to move over to the section of exercises? Let's have a look at the first question. Question 1. What does an arctic fox do to hide from the animals? A. Changes color according to surrounding. B. Use its horn. C. Use its strong leg to run. And D. Gives out bad smell. Well, recall, the arctic fox actually has the ability to do what? Do they first change color according to their surroundings? Or do they have horns? Or do they have strong legs to run away from their enemies? The correct answer, children, is A. Changes color according to surrounding. Remember, when it's summer, the arctic fox is usually grey or brown. When it's winter, it is usually white or blue. What is the next question? Question 2. Which animals produces bad smell to scare away the enemy? A. Bear B. Snail C. Skunk D. Deer We know, children, that the deer has got antlers. The bear got thick fur. What about the snail and skunk? Do the snail or the skunk? Which thing's worse? The correct answer, children, is C. Skunk Remember, the skunks actually have got glands in their body to scare the animals away. What about question 3? How do the porcupines protect themselves? A. By using their claws B. By using their color-changing ability C. They have spines on their body D. By releasing bad smell What is the correct answer, children? What do you think? Do the porcupines actually have claws? Do they have the ability to change color like the chameleon? Let's see the correct answer. The correct answer is C. They have spines on their body. So children, do you remember how many thousands of spines do these porcupines actually have? 30 to 40,000. This is how they prevent other animals from eating them. Let's have a look at the last question. Question 4. Which animals use their claws to protect themselves? A. Snake B. Cow C. Tiger and D. Goat The goat and the cow are actually herbivores. Do they have claws? So, what is the correct answer? C. Tiger, of course. The tigers have got claws to capture their prey and tear them apart. Let's have a look at the vocabulary for the day to understand a few difficult words. Firstly, bed bug. What is a bed bug? It is actually pijak.
pangolin, the one that has got shiny scales on their body, is actually tangiling. Chameleon, the one that can change their body colour, is Sasumpa. Thick fur is Bulu Tabal. Scale, Sisi. Spine, like the porcupine has, is called Duri. Specific characteristics. That is our main lesson today. It is also known as Chiri Chiri Has. So children, do you know anything in detail about the skunk? Do you wonder why skunks actually sting so much? Let's have a look at the trivia to see what makes the skunk sting. How smelly is the skunk? Skunks themselves aren't smelly, but the liquid that they eject from their stink gland is so repulsive that it can temporarily stop its victim from breathing. The skunk is so confident of its weapon that it wanders around at night fighting for food, insects, small animals and berries. Their bold black and white markings serve as a warning to potential predators and they will erect their tails in a threatening posture if they sense danger. So remember children, the skunks when they sense danger usually erect their tail. So after they erect their tail, that is when their sting glands release the stinking smell. Do you fear the tiger's children? What is so special about the tigers that it can attack and bring down its prey? Why do tigers actually have stripes on their body? The tiger is the largest of the big cats and usually hunt alone at night. Did you know children that the tiger is actually in a family of cat? Its coat is striped to blend in with the background as it stalks its prey, usually deer and wild cattle. So children, do you understand now why the tiger needs to be feared and why it is so dangerous? Why do they have stripes? This is the reason why children. We have come to the end of the lesson children. But before I end, let's do a quick recap on the lesson today. Well, children, the animals actually do not produce their own food like plants. So they need to compete with other animals in order to survive. So what are the special characteristics of animals which protect themselves from danger and enemies? They have got armors which is hard scales, hard shell, thick fur and like the porcupines having spines. Other than that, they also produce bad smell. Some of them, like the herbivores, like the cow, goat and so on, have got strong and long horns on top of their head. Other than this, the animals also have the ability to change the colour of their body matching the surroundings. So children, I am sure you can recall the other special characteristics of animals which protect themselves from danger and enemies. So children, see you soon in our next lesson, which is also talking about the protection in animals. And till then, take care and bye bye. Thank you for watching ITTV.